Imagine being able to do your weather and performance calculations in less time with less effort. Oh, but wait, before you stop watching because you think your instructor won't let you use these tools, I'm not talking about ForeFlight or Garmin Pilot. I'm also not talking about any other subscription-based service. <laughs> I'm speaking about a set of free services developed and published by the National Weather Service and the NOAA, the same folks that publish the approved weather products. <laughs> the tools I want to show you are not designed to replace the standard weather briefing. Instead, they're designed to augment them in ways that help you find and focus on the information critical to your flight. Let's look at three common weather dilemmas and how these tools can help. In the first, you've set up your flight plan and gotten a standard briefing, but you're finding it difficult to determine if you'll be able to make the entire flight. <laughs> the surface analysis chart is too generic, and the TAFs are challenging to line up in a way that allows you to determine what the weather will be like along your route. Well, <laughs> AviationWeather.gov's Graphical Forecast for Aviation, or GFA tool, can help. Let me demonstrate. To open the tool, go to AviationWeather.gov. From the Tools menu, select GFA tool, and you're there. This tool provides information similar to what you're used to seeing in your standard briefs, but it provides it in a graphical format that makes it easier to absorb quickly. So, let's say you're planning a flight from Rochester, Minnesota, or KRST, to Aurora, Illinois, K-A-R-R. -R. While we don't know the exact flight time yet, we know the distance is 219 nautical miles. Since our Archer 3 flies at about 115 knots true airspeed, we can estimate it will take about 2 hours, or 219 divided by 115, rounded pessimistically. <laughs> to start, enter your flight plan. To do this, click the Flight Plan button and enter KRST, a space, K-A-R-R, -R, and then press Enter. This should draw your flight path on the map as shown. Now, if you'd like, you can zoom in, and as long as you choose Forecast and TAF, you should see all of the TAFs displayed graphically between your departure and your destination. The Time Selector lets you choose from 1 hour to 15 hours in the future. For this trip, we'll leave at 2100 Zulu, which at this time of year should be about 1500 Zulu local. When we leave KRST, the TAF is showing winds out of 190 at 10 knots, clouds few at 25,000 feet, and visibility greater than 6 statute miles. Our destination doesn't have a TAF report, but we can see at the time of departure KR uh, Rockford, KRFD, O'Hare, KORD, and Midway, KMDW, do and all of them are reporting clouds broken at 20,000 feet with winds out of the south-southeast at about 5 knots. <laughs> so far, so good. Now let's progress the time scale to our approximate arrival time one hour at a time. Moving one hour forward shows the forecast will be the same, and the same when we move to the next hour. So graphically, the forecast shows that you should be able to complete this flight. <laughs> But, just for grins and giggles, let's see how far into the future we can go before the weather changes. Using the arrow key to move forward, we can see that the graphical forecast at our destination starts to change at about 0400 Zulu. At that time, not only do the winds change, but the sky cover moves down to about 4,000 feet overcast, and there's a little bit of rain. This time of year, winter, rain could be very dangerous, so we'll say that that would be our no-go situation. <laughs> Even so, from 2100 to 0400 Zulu means that we have at least 7 hours to get to our destination. So, we should be able to make this flight with several hours of good weather to spare. <laughs> now let's look at a different challenge. One of our viewers, Kurt Rebel, hey thanks Kurt, posed an interesting dilemma. He was tasked with planning a flight from KOKV to KSHD. This is a straight line flight of about 63 miles. If we use a quick estimate at 115 knots true airspeed, that should take between 1 and 2 hours depending on the wind. Unfortunately, trying to find out winds aloft using only the standard briefing tools is difficult. Whether you're here or anywhere else in the United States, there are two major challenges with the standard winds and temperature aloft forecast, and they are First, the effective time of the forecasts is huge. They're released every 6 hours, and a lot can change in 6 hours. And second, the effective area is very large. Winds aloft are tied to only about 200 reporting stations in the continental United States. Plus, the winds and temperature aloft report is in 3,000 foot increments, which leaves a lot of room for interpretation.
In this case, there are four winds and temperature aloft reporting stations nearby, EMI, RIC, ROA, and EKN. If you measure, the closest reporting station is almost 60 nautical miles away, and this is the Shenandoah Valley between the Blue Ridge and Allegheny Mountains. <laughs> I think it's safe to say the local geography makes estimating winds aloft tricky. So, so what do you do? Fortunately, within the GFA tool, there's another interesting feature. If you go back to the tool and select Winds instead of TAF, the tool will display model-derived winds aloft forecasts for the selected area. <laughs> Further, you can then use the Altitude slider to determine how high to look, and the Time slider to explore the forecast up to 18 hours in the future. <laughs> if we look at the desired course an hour from now, we can see that the winds at 3,000, 6,000, and 9,000 are absolutely unfavorable for making this trip. <laughs> However, if we're able to wait until 1,700 Zulu tomorrow, uh, 14 hours in the future, the winds at 3,000 feet will be significantly less, and the winds at 6,000 feet, while starting to get uncomfortable, are still much better than they are tonight. <laughs> in fact, using the time slider, we can see that once the winds come down, they're forecast to stay down for the next several hours. Definitely long enough for us to make the trip. Now, since we're planning to fly westerly, we still do need to do some interpolation to estimate the winds aloft at 4,500 feet. However, using this visual tool, we were quickly able to determine our most favorable altitudes between 3,000 and 6,000 feet and what time would be best to make the trip without doing any math. And this should make flight planning significantly faster. Finally, let's explore one last issue, which is, which wind reporting station should I use? We've used the GFA tool to rule out altitudes, but your instructor and your DPE may still want you to use the formal wind reporting stations to complete your plan. So which should you choose? Well, if you stay in aviationweather.gov and select the winds slash temps report from the forecast menu, you will see a graphical representation of the winds and temperatures aloft forecast. If you zoom the map in so that you see the same area you were reviewing with the GFA tool, we can see our four wind reporting stations. A, a quick run through the timeline and altitude selection tools shows that the wind values are a little different, but our selection of 4,500 feet and our time of 14 hours in the future still seem to be good. At this point, I usually ask myself, what is the real purpose for making these calculations? Well, to me, the most significant reason for doing the en route calculations is to determine flight time to determine whether you have enough fuel or whether you'll need to make a stop. Because of this, I would recommend using the least favorable wind reports that appear the closest to your flight path. In our case, it appears that would be ROA. That station is reporting winds out of 300 at 27 knots for 3,000 feet and out of 260 at 29 knots at 6,000 feet. Using these numbers, we should be able to interpolate the winds aloft and temperatures at 4,500 feet. So, even if you need to use the standard winds and temps forecast, the bottom line is that using the graphical tools can allow you to estimate very quickly and eliminate the altitudes with less favorable winds. So there you have it. The best kept aviation weather secret is the graphical forecasts. While you don't get them in the standard flight briefing, using them can help you significantly narrow down your options, making it feasible to use the standard tools more quickly and more effectively. How about you? Does your instructor let you use the advanced tools within ForeFlight or Garmin Pilot to help with weather planning, or, or do they require you to only use the standard briefing tools? E either way, would your instructor be okay with you using these graphical tools to make your flight planning quicker and easier? Please let me know in the comment section below. <laughs> If this video was helpful, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. Also, please check out the links in the description below. If you're an Amazon shopper, using the link doesn't cost you anything extra, but by clicking on the link, any purchases you make can provide a small commission that helps support the production of these videos. Or you can send a tip using Buy Me a Coffee. Either would be greatly appreciated. Finally, if you're looking for more flight training information, I would recommend watching this video next. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching, fly safely, and I will see you next time.